Hello, my name is Jeroen Wassenaar, project leader for Quenos's uh, Circular Plastics project. I have the pleasure today to speak with Barry Cozier, Director of Sustainability at the Australian Food and Grocery Council, abbreviated as AFGC. Barry is a passionate advocate for soft plastics recycling, and in this interview, we would like to hear his perspective on how recycling targets can be met for this packaging category, often labeled as problematic. Let's kick off with our first question. Who is the AFGC and what is the NPRS? Hi, Ryan. Thanks for uh, having me along today. So the AFGC, Australian Food and Grocery Council, we're the peak body representing Australia's um, food and grocery drinks, food, drink and grocery manufacturing sector. So our members take materials from the farm gate or chemicals, package them into products and then sell them to end market retailers either locally or overseas. So um, we have about 200 members and they range from your small local Australian owned businesses right up to your global multinationals like your Nestle's and Kellogg's and so on. The, the industry itself uh, in 2019-20 was worth about $132 billion and employs just over 270,000 people. So it's a really large manufacturing sector for the economy. So the National Plastics Recycling Scheme, that's something new for our industry. Um, so the AFGC is creating a product stewardship scheme with the aim to assist in the achievement of the national packaging targets. And in short, what we want to do is increase the collection and recycling of soft plastics, but also go a step further and we seek to get that back into food grade packaging in soft plastics, preferably, um, so we can create a packaging circular economy. Thank you, Barry. That's uh, that's really interesting on the uh, on the national plastics uh, rec uh, stewardship scheme. Um, can you expand a little bit further? What are the targets of the NPRS, and and what's it going to look like in practice? Yeah, so the targets for the NPRS are very similar. In fact, we're modelled on the national packaging targets. So the national packaging targets um, that have been led by APCO really are there to establish a circular economy. So they focus on making sure your packaging is recyclable, making sure it's recycled, and then materials purchased back in um, as recycled content, post-consumer recycled content. So the aim for our scheme is a 70% recycling rate of soft plastic packaging. So we're focusing on the primary packaging that um, you'll see in your, um, using it for dog food, chip packets, wrapped around toilet paper, uh, frozen vegetables, that sort of material. So we're looking to recover uh, and recycle 70% of what's put on the market. And also to have a minimum of 10 to 20% recycle content available in food grade uh, quality. To go back into that soft plastics. So what's the scheme look like? Um, what we've tried to do is start with the end in mind on the scheme and look at end markets. So as you're aware, we've been working with the whole supply chain. Um, there's no use creating a collection scheme that standalone if there's no end markets. And so we've really focused on how do we get the demand through the at the end of the pipeline. So what we ultimately want to do is have soft plastics collected, put in your household curbside bin, sent through the recycling supply chain, and then come back in a quality that's suitable for food grade um, soft plastic packaging. Fantastic, a really, really ambitious plan. Um, in how far can the recycling targets for your members be met by conventional mechanical recycling? Uh, a really good question, Euron. Um, when, when we looked at the APCO data, about two thirds of packaging placed on the market is, is rigid plastic packaging. And mechanical recycling serves a really good role there. So if you think about recycling PET bottles, um, HDP milk bottles, polypropylene and so on, it plays a really significant role. However, what that also uh, highlighted is the gap in the recycling of plastics. About a third of all plastic packaging put on the market is soft plastics due to its um, just superior barrier properties um, through the lamination process. However, only about 5% of that is actually recycled at the moment. So to achieve our national packaging targets, 
if we rely on recycling, if we rely on mechanical recycling only, on rigids, we can't achieve the targets. And what's come to light is if you want to recycle soft plastics, you cannot recycle it back into post-consumer um, material with food grade quality. So um, that's where we really need to, I guess, improve the technology of recycling um, and move to things like advanced recycling. Yeah, to totally agree with your assessment. I mean, converting end of life soft plastics back to food grade quality resin is really the key to lift the recycling targets. Um, where do you see the role of the Quenel Circular Plastics project in relation to the NPRS? I think it's very, it's almost fundamental to it. Uh, it's it's a it's a key end market. So when we speak to our members, there's currently a global shortage of uh, food grade packaging for soft plastics. There's a handful of plants globally, um, and when you marry that with the increased demand from brand owners, not just here in Australia, um, but through the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and other targets, um, like in the UK, there's now this significant global demand from global brands for recycled content for all plastic packaging. So there's a real opportunity there, and I guess I, well, how I see the role for Quenos um, is to, to meet that market need and to supply food grade soft plastic packaging that's got a um, post-consumer recycled content in it. So the AFG, we're, we're really excited about um, Quenos's plans to develop advanced recycling in Australia, because um, our preference is if we make packaging in Australia, we sell it in Australia and we can recover it and recycle it within Australia, we're creating a local circular economy that keeps it, and to keep it out of the environment and landfill. So now we're very excited about it and think it's key to the success of the scheme. Thank you, thank you, Barry. Yeah, we're we're working very hard to make this happen, and but are really encouraged by the support we're getting from brands um, as well as converters um, that that we received thus far. So, um, uh, fantastic. Um, so, thank you, Barry, for your time today and valuable insights. I can't wait to see all these plans coming into action in the years ahead. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it.